G'day Internet and welcome back to another video. So my Amstrad CPC, when we left off it was all happy and running and the GoTech was installed and I was able to play games and so on and so forth. But if you remember the Take Deck wasn't working yet and I was waiting on parts and they were going to take forever but they finally showed up. So today we're going to have a look at the Take Deck. Now be forewarned, I've never really pulled a Take Deck apart before. I've changed belts and things like that, but getting into the mechanicals of it is something I've never done. So bear with me while I try to replace this idler arm. So first things first, I guess, let's pull the thing apart. So we now have one retrieved tape deck, and this is the part that arrived. So if we carefully tip this out, we have the pulley, a spring, an arm, a screw, and what seems to be a little brass bush. That's those there. So what we're actually replacing is that there. Now there's a couple of ways you could do about it. You can actually force most of this mechanism here back, pop the little circlip, replace the pulley and off you go. But I'm going to attempt to do this properly, so to speak. And it seems that, okay, so it's actually this um, spring bush and screw just here. So it's actually here. This, this is the uh, arm, so that's uh, that bit there, kind of goes in. Which means most of it sits in underneath, a little bit sits in underneath here, and the, other re the rest of it sits in here. So, I'm guessing at least the circuit board has to come off. Is that all of it? Where am I still attached? Um, the grey wire to the drive motor. Can't quite get that out of the way. We may have it out of the way enough. Because if we're talking about this section here, so hopefully I can kind of just hold that out of the way. Um, so the next thing that's going to have to come off is this drive pulley and I'm wondering if it's one that just simply pops off. If it is, it's going to make my life a lot easier, but I think we should start by removing the bracket that holds the other drive pulley in which is here and it is attached and it's attached to this whole mechanism here which seems to be part of the eject mechanism I mean there's a screw here but it doesn't look like something I really want to take out oh hang on Yes. All right, careful. Okay, so that's out of the way. Let's just remove the drive belt, which is new already. The question is, does this... Oh, hang on. All right, well, that carefully lifted out. So that's a start, and now I still need to get in here. So it really depends on if this just pulls out or how this is at least attached. Oh, wait. Ah, okay. So it hooks here down underneath and then it just goes back on. That's good to know. And now it should just be a case of undoing this screw 
and its bushing removing the idler arm and unhooking it so that's the old one here is the new one with its new rubber and we should be able to hook that spring on carefully just stay there for a minute put this bushing on the screw a bit like a washer but it's not and get this I realize all my fat fingers in the way probably isn't making for riveting video but needs must and that seems to be back in place I thought it moved more than that okay so now this guy hooks back in whoop, upside down hooks back in and over its pivot point here uh, this guy should just drop straight back down and probably a good time to put the drive belt back on Oh. Well, we'll call it a less bad time to put the drive belt back on. Good. And now, if we were to drop you... You... you and you it's this silver flat one come on go in gentle yeah that seems or feels right at least um, getting my screws all mixed up I suspect they've got a very specific way no that's too big in this one. Is the other one small enough? Right. Yep, that feels good. Now put the circuit board back on. And, right, so if we flip this over, well, it's back where it should be, and if we go play, it engages, good. And that's pretty much about it. It doesn't engage for any of the other functions. It's basically just the play, because the whole point is, is it joins this here with this here. And obviously, drives it. So let's put it back into the Amstrad 
and we'll see if it actually fixed it. Right, as you can probably tell by the state of my bench, that didn't go to plan. Apart from a lot of cleaning, lubing, sandpapering, and a general kind of servicey type thing, the problem I found was this. That's the pinch roller there, obviously. Well, that's the roller, and that's the pinch just there. And basically, it wasn't pushing up that way far enough. If I switch the computer back on, and uh, let's rewind it. And I run up, go run, quote, um, play. And if I zoom in just a bit, if I just even bump that there, sorry, other way, that way, away, it will skip. Okay, it's not doing it now. Yep, there we go. See how it slows down? It slows down, releases. Okay, so, and now I've got a read error. So what I found was, I'm just going to turn this off, if I flip this up, for the pinch roller there's a series of springs underneath here and on the actual pinch roller bracket there's this bit just here which I'm clipping onto, actually if I hit, it's that bit just there, I'm hoping you can see that. Anyway, so I basically grabbed a small pair of pliers and bent it that way, just a hair. And what that's done is it's enabled this just to push up just a little higher. So if you imagine it like that, if I press play, it comes up and just a hair higher and now it's running fine. So let me put all this back together. Right, with it all back together, again again um, I can show you that the tape deck works now funnily enough the only cassette I actually have for the Amstrad is the bank switching software for the 64k memory expansion that's it I don't actually have any other tapes and the whole but the whole purpose of this was to get this working so I could say the whole machine is working so let's pop the tape in and go run, quote, enter, play, enter, and away it goes. Don't worry, I'll fast forward through this. It works. And there you go, one working tape deck in my CPC 464. 
which will probably serve me personally no use whatsoever. Between the GoTech and the disk drive interface and all the rest of it, let's be honest, that's how I'm going to be loading software on the Amstrad. But it's nice that everything now works. If you found the video useful and or liked it or whatever, click like, subscribe, all that kind of stuff, and I'll see you in the next one.